That's what I'm going to do. First, welcome Professor Ben Smith to give us the opening remarks. Okay, good morning. Um, I'm afraid to make this as long as possible. Maybe people get out of bed and make it here. Um, so this is a school that's uh, basically run every year. Um, and for, for the support of the school, we have to thank Princeton Center for Complex Materials and Princeton Center for Theoretical Physics. Um, and basically, this school is one of the students, which is um, kind of the, the uh, very nice thing about it. About the, about the school, they pick up the topics and do everything I just give the speech at the beginning of the school. So the student organizers who we have to thank for this are Jing Wang, Jing Jing Ling, Woody Wang, and Yong Long Shi. Um, and there's more help from uh, Yu Chun Zhang and Wang Yan. And also, nothing would happen without the conference coordinators, Sarah Martinez Rodriguez and Sonaria. And um, of course, nothing would happen without the speakers who have taken part of the summer to come here and give talks. Nothing will happen without you, so um, let's make it a good school. Thanks. Uh, so the first one is for uh, let me say a few things. The first is that uh, Chris will not uh, pick up the comments in the classroom. Uh, the second is that Chris always uh, wear your badges. So our first uh, lecture will be Professor David Hughes, uh, who will talk about the quantum summarization. Okay, so I'm going to talk on the blackboard, so people who are staying in the way back might want to move down, since of course there's lots of room up front here. Okay, um, so the two themes of this summer school are many body localization and uh, frustrated magnetism, or something like this. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk today about not many body localization, but the opposite of many body localization. Okay, so uh, this is part of the many body localization program, but we have to sort of talk about what many body localization isn't before talking about what it is. At least that's the way I approach it. Okay? And, and what it isn't is thermalization. And, and this is what uh, I'm going to tell you about in today's lecture, is quantum thermalization. This is very fundamental uh, questions and concepts in quantum statistical mechanics. And so the system we want to think about is an isolated meaning isolated from the environment. So it's not coupled to, to anything outside of this uh, box I put it in, which is, say, in a cold atom experiment is a vacuum chamber. Right? So it's isolated. It's many-body. So inside of this, we have a many-body quantum system interacting. So it's not a special quantum system with some fine-tuned properties that make it, say, beta ons not solvable, or, or it's non-interacting or something like that. I want something that's a generic interacting system. And it's highly excited. And by highly excited, I mean very highly. You know, not the ground state plus a few excitations, an extensive number of excitations, right? We have a, a system which ultimately is big, many degrees of freedom, and a number of excitations in proportion to the number of degrees of freedom in the system. So that when it goes to thermal equilibrium, if it does, it's at a temperature which is non-zero. And often we study, at least theoretically, we study the limit of infinite temperature. There's interesting stuff happening at infinite temperature in various kinds of spin models. Um, so this is different than a lot of condensed matter physics where the focus is on the low temperature behavior and in particular on the ground state behavior. Um, 
In experiments, you can't actually look at the ground state. You look at low temperatures, and then you make sure you're at low enough temperatures that you can either extrapolate to zero temperature or you're seeing behavior characteristic of zero temperature. That's a conventional thing to do in an awful lot of condensed matter physics, whereas I'm in a, I want to talk about the opposite limit, something that's far from zero temperature. The regime where thinking about it as a ground state plus a bunch of interacting excitations is just not the right approach. There's no such description that's useful. Okay, so that's, that's uh, where I'm going to be working. Okay, now, okay, the system, you know, it could be many things, many different things, so, so it could be could be cold atoms, and we'll hear about cold atoms here specifically. It could be ions. So a lot of experiments on these kinds of systems are actually atomic physics type experiments. Um, cold atoms, ions, molecules, it could be photons. So these are our, the degrees of freedom in our system. Or if it's a condensed matter system, maybe they could be electrons spins, or maybe if it's an, another kind of engineered system, some kind of qubits. So, so whatever you want to make the system with, we can ask these same questions, right? And nowadays, you know, people are exploring quantum dynamics uh, and these kinds of questions in all these kinds of systems in the laboratory. Okay, so rho of t is, is the state of the, uh, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say full system. So there's gonna be a distinction I'm gonna make in a minute between the full system, which is all degrees of freedom, and some subsystem inside. So rho of t is the state of the full system. I write it as a density operator because when you're talking a large many-body system in the laboratory, you can't prepare pure states. You can only prepare mixed states. But we're more familiar with pure states. Um, and so, and theoretically, it's nice to think about pure states. And so if we have a pure state, then rho of t is simply the wave function times itself. So this is the construction to make a density operator out of a pure state. Okay. But this is just a theoretical idealization in the laboratory for macros for large systems with many degrees of freedom, pure states are never really <coughs> never really prepared. Um, Okay. Now, the dynamics is given by a Hamiltonian, H of t. So this gives the dynamics. And we're interested, actually, in two cases. Um, so one case is H of t equals h, is time independent. case of interest. Um, and that's a truly isolated system, so it's not being driven by something external. But we also, so this is one case, and then the other case is so-called Floquet systems. Which is where h of t is a periodic function of time. So the system isn't strictly isolated. It's being driven externally by some classical periodic drive. And so this could be just some RF source, you know, or microwaves, or you know, any, any uh, typically in the laboratory, it would be uh, an, an oscillatory electric field. Not necessarily. It could be some modulation. Yeah. 
some modulation of the optical lattice. Yeah. Um, so a pure state is in some sense zero entropy, right? Your system is absolutely in one particular state. And that degree of control of state preparation is only there for very small systems, right? You know, experiment, you know, with some very small number of qubits, you could prepare but even there it isn't, right? You know, we talk, when, you, when you do some experiment, you say you prepare three qubits in a particular state. You don't pair it in a particular state. You pair it in that state with some fidelity, which is probably 98%, which means it's a mixed state, right? There's, there's a 2% of the state is not controlled, right? And so it doesn't look like this. It's this plus corrections. And so it's a mixed state. Does that address... Uh, well, the off-diagonal, well, uh, off-diagonal in which basis? Well, I, I mean, well, okay, so Right, of course, rho of t is an operator, and it has a spectrum in eigenstates, and so it has a diagonal representation. I guess, I guess I meant, like, well, uh, okay, maybe, maybe in that Yeah, right, and I'll talk about, right, of course, the dynamics, right, if you have, if your pure state is an eigenstate, say, say just talk about something familiar. If the Hamiltonian is time independent, and we pick a pure state, which is an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, then it's boring because nothing happens. There's no dynamic, right? And so in the basis of the eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, the off-diagonal terms of the density operator give you all the dynamics. There's no dynamics on the diagonal. On the diagonal, nothing is happening. So we are, of course, very interested in off the diagonal in the, in the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, because that gives the dynamic. Oh, okay, okay. So, so the time of Hamiltonian, uh, and then I, I, I see that, like, uh, okay, there's a mixed state, but there's a probability for being in, like, the lowest state. Let, let, let me go a little further. I'm going to address some of this in a bit. So, 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 so let's postpone that a little bit. Yeah. Well, I want to take the limit of a large system, and in that limit, pure states are impossible. Yeah. Yeah, because you know the fidelities you have in experiments are realistically 99% in one degree of freedom. 99% to the 10 to the 5 is is a very small number. Yeah. It's not necessarily an important point for what I want to say, but I think when one talks, you know, this is an unfortunate thing about the way we teach quantum mechanics. It's all about pure states in the textbooks. And, and, and real systems typically aren't in pure states, right? And it's not that important, but it tends to get neglected that you know, one should be a little careful about this. Yeah. Excuse me? You said that it's classically prerogative driven. Right. Is there any meaning behind the word classical here? Like, is there a non classical way? It means, it means I can describe it like this. So, re right. right. No, no, okay. So, the real system, of course, would be driven by some electromagnetic radiation, which is periodic in time. And that electromagnetic radiation is a bunch of photons. And that would be an additional set of degrees of freedom, which are the photons which are driving it. Right? And that's the way you really drive a system. Right? But I'm assuming we're driving it with a coherent state, which involves so many photons, and is nice enough so that the system doesn't get entangled with those photons. All that happens is the photons produce a periodic Hamiltonian. And that's what I mean by classical. Right? 
of that. So when you, when you drive something classically, what I mean is the system doesn't get entangled with the drive. The drive perturbs the system, but doesn't provide something to get entangled. So, so there's, you know, the external environment has two properties. One is it can perturb the system, and another thing is the system can get entangled with the external environment, right? And, and I'm letting it perturb the system, but I'm not letting there be entanglement. And so that's what you mean by a classical drive. A classical system, the classical limit, well, at least in some usage, and certainly the usage I meant right here is no entanglement. Okay, so when we have a system like this, uh, in particular, this one here is what, what is usually discussed in uh, stat mech. So the uh, usual stat mech assumption is system goes to thermal equilibrium at long term. So if we set up a system like this with many degrees of freedom and wait, it goes to equilibrium. Right? And if that's true, then we can just use the equilibrium statistical mechanics to figure out what its behavior is at long time. We don't have to solve the dynamics, right? And that's an enormous simplification, and that's the power of statistical mechanics. Okay? Now, when this happens, so if true, right, of course, okay, the point here, we assume this when we do statistical mechanics, but it's not always true, and that's what many body localization is about, is the situations where it's not true. Okay? But when it's true, so if this is true, what's happening is the system is a bath for itself. It didn't need an external bath to bring itself to equilibrium, it itself is a bath and brought itself to equilibrium. More precisely, it brought subsystems to equilibrium. Okay. 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 Um, okay, so but this assumption is not true for uh, many body localized. hear about that. I'll say a few things about that. But the first question is not, is it true or is it not true, but what does it even mean? Right? So this statement here, system goes to thermal equilibrium for time goes to infinity, those are a bunch of words, uh, but their meaning is you know, not, well, one could uh, interpret their you could interpret those words in a way that's incorrect. Okay. Okay. So let's define thermalization. So thermalization is this: the system goes to thermal equilibrium as time goes to infinity. And let's let's be rather precise about it. Okay. Now we know quantum dynamics, so the quantum dynamics is just unitary time evolution. So there's some unitary operator which evolves the system from time zero to time t. And this is the exact dynamics. So for a uh, Unitary operator is either given by this time independent Hamiltonian or maybe it's given by this time periodic Hamiltonian. Um, so this is the exact dynamics of a quantum closed, closed, isolated quantum system. Yeah? 